Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Lighting Your Sunshine, where we like to shine a light within and empower ourselves. So today, uh, no insights or downloads yet. Um, let's just hop into the cards and see what they have to say. So we're gonna use the Triple Goddess Tarot with hmm, the Hidden Realms. So when I picked them, I kind of heard that there's something a little bit mysterious about Earth that we don't quite um, fully understand yet. So let's just get a little bit in depth in that and see what they want to share. Okay, so a little bit when I did that, um, I just kind of like was like zoning off, kind of looking into the past of like which lines and things like that we're wanting to come through to kind of share and and i got that like maze was important or i felt very drawn almost to like mexico but it wasn't quite that it was like something to do with maze they said so i have what do i have I haven't really quite read yet but first thing i saw was colors purple and then we have kind of like this very mute earthly color in the center here. One's upright, the other two are in reverse. So when we look here on the left, we have infinite potential. And here there's a lady, and it could be Native American as well, I guess. That's why I was like, I feel like Mexico, but not Mexico. Um, but yeah, so she has feathers in her hair. So that's where I'm kind of getting the Native American vibes, but she has a baby and in that that's infinite potential. Like there's so many things that can unfold in this situation that you just kind of have to go with the ebbs of, and flow with life. That's what they're showing. Oh, and then this one is the Trinity. So there, there's the baby, right? They're holding the baby right there, but there's the mother, the grandmother. Um, and I think there's this thing that they say that when your grandmother is born, that when she's born, she has like all in her womb, all the eggs and embryos that she'll ever have. And then so within that, your mother has that. So within your grandma, you exist. So to actually see this infinite potential upon layer, upon layer, upon layer, and then to get the Trinity come out, um, I feel like that's a very sacred message that we're not gonna tap more into that. We're just gonna let that unfold because um, it's going to trickle down into this somehow. So the one that comes next from it is in the upright. We have like this little monk and they're holding um, a lotus. And it says the high Lord of gratitude and service, selflessness, hu humility, and conscious action. So I'm being drawn first to uh, the bird. Well, to be honest, really it was the light. You can see the, the man, the human, but the human itself isn't really draw you in. It's the, it's the light that they admit, the joy and the radiance. And then I was drawn to the bird, which went to the feathers in this mother's hair. So in the left here, we have the fire prints in reverse. So this stands for optimism and aggression. Well, <laughs> with this infinite poten potential, it's said to go with the flow. And with the flow, I'm seeing more water energy rather than aggression. And you look at this one and he's just very peaceful. He's in his very happy element, um, soaking up light. And we always say sometimes that light could be destructful, but not in this case. Look at how balanced this light is. And so when you have a very firm foundation, look how, and, and if you give light a place to thrive, um, light is not weak. A lot of the times people think that peace and joy and love and all that stuff is weak, but in fact, it is, it's powerful. It's just really the type of containment of the energy that you allow within it for it to become what it is. So then the next one we have also was in reverse, but it's Gaia's garden. Fruition, abundance, reaping what you sow. So this is in reverse. Reaping what you sow. 
It doesn't matter what you do. It matters how you do it. I'm seeing actions come before that are like the grandparents because there's the Trinity card here. And in the Trinity card, she, she is encompassing uh, generations to come. Um, reaping what you sow. I feel like I need to pull a clarifier on that. Okay. So we got the prison, the prison wave with self-sabotage and poverty consciousness. And, and what I felt from that as I was, and again, it's like a brown, brownish kind of color. Um, and as I was trying to like shuffle and like tap into the energy, I, I could hear a horn honking in the background, like honk, honk. And then I just heard someone be like, I'm coming, I'm coming. Like, just like, um, I, they needed more time. In this instance, I kind of got was like, you need just a little bit more time, but being like pushed into it. So this garden, um, isn't quite ready the fruition something about fruition because there is no aggression and things like that um but with this self-sabotage let me just see what this self-sabotage wants to kind of really expectations okay so when I looked at this, here she is kind of in jail, right? They are in prison and there's the light coming in. And I felt not worthy of the light. Um, being like, I don't know how to sit in this energy because that's the thing with like meditation and prison. Take both of these people. One of them doesn't look like they're having a good time and the other one looks like they're having the time of their lives. But in reality, they're both doing the exact same thing. They're just sitting there. And it's all kind of getting like, almost like Nelson Mandela. Like you just can't really break someone's spirit unless unless I'm seeing that the mind, the mind is kind of the, the first thing to go, right? The heart, the heart always will kind of go true north. The heart will point to where it wants to go. It's the mind that has the battle or the war within. And so when I looked at this, this prison one, um, I was brought to the Trinity card and I heard that they didn't feel worthy of the light because of the generations that had expectations before them. And it's like, I feel like, and, but, but that's, that's like a really, okay. I'm seeing someone like take grandparents for, for an example. It was easy for them to get careers and it was easy for them to go to school and get a house and provide for a family and right pay their mortgage with just like one person going to work and times aren't like that now so for you to compare to that time um it's just like what about that i'm seeing that that is a problem but i'm also seeing just thinking that they it's almost like the adults okay i'm seeing someone like the adults before them when they were younger and they looked up to them and admired them that they seemed like real legit adults <laughs> and now like you're an adult you're the same age as them you look around and you're like i'm not embodying that same energy as what i thought an adult was and then and it's kind of like with generation with generation it it, it kind of changes or shifts or whatever but I'm also seeing punishment change as well. So from the very first generations, like the grandmothers, they were very strict and, and they had like rules and like confinements. So <laughs> it may have been like this, this kind of prison, you know, you live under my house, you do my rules. And it seems like things get a little bit more flexible with each generation. So that's why I'm seeing this, this fire kind of um, dim each generation, that aggression. Because I feel like in order to maintain, you know, you live under my house, my rules, they, they yelled a lot. 
they, you know, they were, they were quick to, no one ever really wants to get mad, I'm hearing, but that, that seems to be what it was. It was like ruling with an iron fist or a very loud voice and whoever could yell the loudest uh, got heard. And so I see it becoming quieter and quieter and quieter. Um, but I'm also hearing that that's why the reaping what you sow isn't quite in alignment because things are changing and times are changing and consciousness and pers perspective is changing. And, and in the olden days, they would I, use that iron fist, but it was for like keeping peace. It was almost like I see one person like getting up and out of line. It's like, you get back in line. It's like everyone knew kind of like what their role was in this. And, and it worked in that. It was a happy environment, but things are changing. And then all of a sudden, um, by applying the same technique over and over and over again, um, this used to be the result. You know, I yell and then peace is restored. But I'm seeing now that it, it, it's not happy. There's not that joy and people aren't feeling worthy or something like that. So let's pull some more of these cards. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing I'm hearing people march. Almost like the the elephants in the jungle book. So the cards that came out, we had solar plexus. And then we had infinite bliss in reverse. It's not in bliss. Anyone know what card it landed on? Uh, in the middle here, I have the high lord of service with the prison wave and it landed on the prison. It's like that, which is exactly taking away that bliss from that. And as they said, the high lord of gratitude and service to be of service to others. Um, at one point, it, it feels good to give. It does, but not, not, I don't know, something's changed and now it seems to be expected or something like that. And then when I look at this infinite bliss, there is a bird like flying and it looks like she's like pleading to it. Like, please, I'm hearing it's a thunderbird. And that Thunderbird's going to like bring the rain. And the rain is that um, refreshing waters of this uh, to put out this oppression. And once that oppression kind of comes underneath that is this solar plexus energy. So how do you go from radiating fire and destructive to like happy sunshine? So that's what I'm seeing is like a little bit of giving, giving back the confidence to go to go from controlling red fire to happy confident sunshine is the only thing that's different in this this one lacks the confidence this one this one's sitting in the sunlight basking and knowing yes maybe um maybe things may be hot and fiery around right there's this red energy above the light but i'm safe i'm happy there's rules everything works out but in this one, this one doesn't feel worthy to connect to the to the sunshine energy. I don't feel worthy to connect. Please, can I have some water? Please have some rain. So the next card that comes out is the crown chakra. And at the very, very, very top of this is the bird. Um, and so that now, that one landed on Gaia's garden, but you know what I think is kind of interesting? Uh, I feel like these two cards almost look the same. Like there, there's her face there and she has like these things kind of coming out of her head. And then over here, um, like her face and then she has the horns. It's almost like the same image. So this one was in reverse. It also kind of lands within the Trinity. And the Trinity card is the same color as this. These two look the same. This one embodies the color. So once these two kind of embody together, it, it will turn into this one. So let me see what the connection that is missing. Reaping what you sow. Fruition and abundance. Hmm. Again, that's that mother maiden um, grandchild type energy and mother made in crone and it seems that the things and the ways that worked once 
aren't bringing the harvest that they used to. They used to reap what they sowed because it worked, but it's, it's not working anymore. Uh, the seeds are being planted. It's taking time and effort, but it's not, it's not illuminating things. And I almost feel like in this, the light is just, something's off with it. There's too much uh, of this fire energy kind of getting confuddled with in it. Because it should be, it should be clear. It should be pure. You see what I mean? This one's still a little bit yellow where it's like the, the white light. Even even the, the prisoner card has the white light. This one's a little bit muddy. It's got a little bit of aggression in it. And I think the aggression is like, why do we still have to keep doing the other people? Like they're sitting there happy. I feel like that's like the grandparent energy. It's like, well, it worked back then. It still works for me. And, the, and it's great, but it's like other people don't feel great. So spirit, what about this? It's about igniting and, and adding hope to, they're asking for water to put out the aggression, to have a little bit of self-confidence that when they actually go and put their efforts and their work into something that eventually rather than paying that gratitude and all that extra hard work for, for elders or this could be rich or someone else on top to kind of receive those benefits, um, they're saying, uh, a little bit of that that source to kind of trickle down and it's it's interesting because the light is touching them like they are they are like worthy of it I see the source there it's just like a disconnect of like like don't touch children should be seen and not heard and type stuff but I'm seeing you're not the child anymore you're in the adult role and now that you're the adult you don't feel like how you thought the adults felt. Something to do like that. So where are we at? 17 minutes. Okay, let's pull like three more to like wrap this up. Okay, these three wanted to come out as well. So it's interesting. Cool. Okay, I'm not looking at these ones. Let's put them over here. I'm hearing... Well, obviously, uh, I'm like, why did I get two sets of three? Because I, like, I heard three. And so the one set is for like the younger generation, what they could focus on to work through. And then the, the second set is for the older generation because both need to do a little bit of give or shift or change in order to meet kind of in the middle. And what I thought was cool because I'm talking about this Thunderbird being like, we need rain. We really do. Um, this is the first card to come out. The Lady of Lightning. It says surprises, sometimes shock. Total paradigm shift. And I think that's what needs to happen. It's been going on a drought for a while. So we have the Altar Priestess. It's been going on a drought. Because so here's the Desert Prince. <laughs> I don't, that's why when I find... I didn't even see that when I said the drought. I just saw it from that. And then the altar priestess, preparation, prayer, sacred ritual. The things of the past aren't working anymore because it's in reverse and it's caused this drought. Uh, survival and false promises. And I think that's that's the thing that has uh, really crushed this person and like given up hope. It seems like before it's like a mishap, mishap, whatever, whatever. This isn't your payday, whatever. It's not your time, whatever. Um, but it's the false promises. Yeah, but, you know, if you continue doing that, you will get this. You will. And then it's like, all right. And then eventually realizing all of it, it's just lies. It's the lying that hurts the, the lower, the younger generation is what I hear. And that, that's the thing, like, right? It said, like, usually when you are in there, and this one's all about self-sabotage, it, it's, it's a mental thing. The heart will always shine due north, right? And and you know what you want. So you kind of, like, at the first couple times, and then eventually, after you get lied to so many times, it's that mind thing that, well, I don't even want to try. I've tried so many times, and I've gotten burned. So that's the mentality that needs to change within this. Because I see the sun, the sun is there and it's like everything is fine to tap into this. 
Um, I even see like, look at this, like there's the door, the door is wide open. She's not really, it's self-sabotage. So now it's about the younger one, maybe standing up for yourself, but I see the rain, the praying for the rain. It's like dealing with the emotions of this. I feel like after you get burned, after you get burned, uh, you have to say, that's not fair, you know? This is why I'm hurt. Um, maybe other people won't want to hear why you're hurt. But I think I think telling your story is the first step of what's important. Um, because it says surprises sometimes shock. And they, they won't want to hear it. Like it's shocking. Like children are supposed to be quiet. That's what I keep hearing. They should be seen and not heard. And so now for you to actually stand up, you're like, I'm not a child anymore. And that's the big shock. It's a paradigm shift. Look at you all grown up. And, and it seems like now that you're in this adult state, things aren't quite as easy as it was for earlier people. And it's because the ways just don't work anymore. Um, so there is going to be a total paradigm shift. Um, and giving a little bit of power back to those who, who are kind of feeling powerless. Y you know what I mean. Okay, so for the next one. In the older generation, what do they have to focus on? Well, we have the Shadow Queen in reverse. It seems like, so that is acquiring knowledge, insecurity, and manipulation. And there they are. They've got the light. They've got the knowledge. But they've they've kind of also learned how to tap into that, that piece. Um, they've learned to take their rage and... and inquire it into knowledge i feel like that they're the ones and that's why it could be a little bit manipulative maybe in some instances it was like i raise my voice um but we'll we're not gonna I, I get that this this generation really worked through hard things and learned to find happiness in the current moment is what they've they've learned right appreciating what you've got which is something that the younger ones could kind of learn uh, because I'm seeing like people kind of be born after like the war, right? Um, resources were hard and we don't really know those kind of things. We just read through books or hear on TV or something like that. And especially when it comes to the internet now, can you really trust what, what you read? But they lived it. And so there's knowledge and there's sacredness in that. And maybe they try to hold a tight ship because they don't want things to go that way. Right? I don't know. There's just different ways we were raised. Things are changing. So the next one, right? So Shadow Queen in reverse, they really work through some shadowy dark times to find light, is the Spiral Dancer. And there she is again, holding light. It's, it's the circle route of perception. They've learned to change their minds. Uh, okay, so like for this one, I get like it's, it's more boomer energy, right? Um, and, and from there, lifetime i'm seeing we see them as unchangeable right we keep seeing them as kind of stuck in their ways that they they want to they don't want things to change and it it's because we kept listening to their system uh it doesn't really work for the today kind of route but they've changed their mind a lot more than we are understanding they come from a time before technology they come from a time before all these things and, and they've learned to adapt and adjust and kind of weigh their options, right? They, they, they've learned to kind of go with the flow. They realize that everything is progressing forward towards something new or different. And I think that's the state that kind of keeps them in this grateful energy, right? They were there when it was like, well, example, someone who invested in, in beta, uh, probably didn't really get to use it much because VHS came out like just a couple, <laughs> a little short while after. And then that one blew up and took off. So it's always like kind of like, and that's how technology, I don't feel like technology has been like, no, it could. Technology is such a fascinating thing. And that's what I'm getting with these boomers, right? They had to learn how to use like phones. Some of them refuse to learn, but a lot of it is just because they don't know how to teach because things seem to be spiraling quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. 
And so that's what I'm hearing now is that things have spiraled so fast that they've learned to be very flexible and try to keep up with technology and be the leading edge cut cutting edge whatever but uh things have kind of spiraled too quickly because the next one to come is the sun dancer and it was in reverse and so with this light and this knowledge right because in this shadow it was about acquiring knowledge and insecurity they've gone through so many light moments like that they've gained so much life experience and data um this is pretty much life experience and learning how to navigate circumstances and flow and situations. And this one is all about mentally looking at the same thing. Both of them are just sitting there. Both of them could have in that moment, it doesn't matter which room you're putting, you could just sit there in peace. You are who you are kind of energy. But I see that they gained so much and they kept trying to keep up and kind of controlling it that it spun off out and now now they have to admit a little bit that I'm not reaping what I sowed from that one card. I can't remember which one that was. Um, oh yeah, the Gaia's Garden. Gaia's Garden isn't isn't providing back. Uh, there tends to be so many things now that have almost kind of come back in on themselves and started to collapse and things like that. And so the sun's in reverse. So the sun is all about joyful activity, celebration of life, and abundance. Uh, the only reason why I don't feel like there's joyful activity is because the younger people, they're, they're not quite celebrating. They're not quite reaping the benefits of it. And and they're, I feel like there's no abundance because the garden's not growing. So to the prison ones, it's kind of like I see them like <gasps> holding their breath, like taking on all these grunts, maybe like resources are being crumbled or I don't know what it is, but something's collapsing on itself because it spiraled too fast. And so I feel like the one that it all starts with is this one. The person feeling mentally trapped or in confinement needs to be like, nobody has power over me. And to like step into this lightning moment and this lightning moment kind of brings uh, the rain. And once that rain kind of comes, it soothes them and the, the fire is kind of put out. So now rather than being fire, it's now sunshine. And that sunshine brings in this sun dance and this sun dance starts to plant the seeds in Gaia's garden so that deep, deep in the shadows, new seeds will start to sprout. I see um, new energy kind of being took into the depths and, and sparking that light again. Once that light kind of ignites, um, I see, do you see here on the, on the altar, in most of the pictures, she was like holding light in her hand. And I feel like that that light grew and grew and grew. It was like, it was this knowledge, it was this power, but it over spiraled and it kind of caught on fire. And so now, now I feel like in order, once that fire went out of control, it kind of went into like this desert period and you had to put the fire out. The fire needed to be put out. And so once that fire was put out, you had to learn how to create that spark again. Um, that spark is like magical creation that comes from the alignment of the mind and the heart and the energy through you. And and so when I did that and I kind of felt the, I saw this one, this one ended on the Trinity. And, and I saw that as almost like the birth canal. It's like, okay, on to the next, on to the next. And then from there, remember how Gaia's garden, oh shoot, I put it in this stack somewhere, was the exact same embodiment of this card. I see, I see the new generation going through the canal, learning that light, them having a life experience like the previous generation had. So now they spark that knowledge and start another cycle or another spiral of abundance. So we'll leave it there. I hope you guys have a good day and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.